there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be with you. Come right on in, my friend. We've got a great program for you today. And I want you to know it's an honor that you join us. I was reading some email uh, before I came downstairs and thank you for all the encouragement. And you know what I've learned? We're all on the same page. We're praying for our kids and we're doing this and we're doing that and there's so much similarity and I feel like uh, we're sisters and a few brothers, even though we haven't met. So thank you for being there. You will be glad you tuned in today because I have a guest I've been looking forward to for several months. Her name is Heather M. Dixon. And she's written a book called Renewed, Finding the Hope uh, When You Don't Like Your Life. <laughs> I'll bet there's a few out there that you don't really like your life and the way it's going. This is for you. Now, let me tell you, if you don't read or anything, you want this book anyway, because it is just laid out beautifully. Every, every woman would enjoy just the way this book looks. But it's very important because it's an in-depth study and look at a lady in the Bible who didn't like her life at all. And I would have to say, I understand. Her uh, husband had died. Both of her sons had died. She's in a strange country. Her name was Naomi. Remember her? She was the mother-in-law of Ruth. So we're going to talk about her. But also my guest uh, has had a real battle because of an autoimmune disease. And so I had this vision of her for several weeks, you know, that maybe life's hard. She's the most exuberant, joyful Christian. And I told her, I said, you're just so happy. Isn't it wonderful to meet someone like that? You're going to love Heather. So stay with us before I... Um, Join her. I've got this book by Kay Arthur. And if you know evangelical circles at all, and some of the prominent women in them, you recognize the name of Kay Arthur. And she has condensed down the basic steps to learn and understand the Bible. And I can't tell you how important that is. You can have a jump start in so many areas that will be important to your life. This is available to you for any amount, any gift to the ministry. Large or small, we appreciate. You can use the 800 number, 1-800-229-0059. Or write to me at box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. We love getting your mail. I, I think everybody, Stephanie, I think everybody's, they can look forward to going to the mailbox. I love getting my mail. I do, too. I do. It's bills, but I still, like, sometimes it's letters. <laughs> I like getting it. At least you know it. someone's thinking of you. Yes. Well, before we get started, she's always making fun of my portions of oh. soup. <laughs> soup? Yep. I brought the one I had today. Like what? What? That was my bowl of soup today. So what would you say that... That wouldn't be quite be a half a cup, would it? No, no, a I'm, half a cup of soup. I'm very satisfied, though, so, so I thought I would show you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring symbols, and every time you clang your rings together, I'm going to clang those symbols together. Let's do it. <laughs> It'll be more exciting program. Quite the joke now. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. She made me take my ring off yesterday. And everyone I'll be a good me. girl. No. <laughs> okay, so you have. Mm -hmm. A half a cup of powdered sugar, two tablespoons of melted butter, two tablespoons of lemon juice, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You're going to mix that all together for me. Because that's this the glaze. Is not, this is mine. That's yours. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the glaze. I have a cup and a half of flour, a, table, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to mix those together. To, and we might say this has a lot of ingredients. You better order the... Yes, do. This is, a, because, this is a big recipe. Yes, and you're a lot. Just get it. It's free, so just get it. Or be ready to pause your TV at the end because it comes up on the screen. Yes. Yes. So we, then I have... Okay. There's a lot, we're trying something new, okay? I'm reading off a, a board. The ingredients, <laughs> it doesn't make it very easy. So I have... Well, a cup of sugar, I have a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, two teaspoons of le uh, lemon zest, two tablespoons of lemon juice, so good, a half a cup of milk, and I'm going to mix those all together, okay? The, the butter has kind of solidified a little bit. This is <laughs> definitely... So good. Listen, we tasted the batter. My this, yes. Yeah, we tasted the batter a little bit. We were it kind of delicious. tempted to just... Make another bowl of batter and sit down. Right. Yeah. Have a cup of coffee. You could have a cup of tea. I'm just gonna... Do you think that's going to mix good? It's not very uh, yeah, liquidy. Yeah, that's it. Is mm -hmm. it? Really? Okay. Yeah. If you want to stick it in the microwave for 10, 
What do you, this is mine. Well, that's yours. Where's mine? That's it. That's your, you're the glaze, sister. Okay, that I is thought it, it had powdered sugar in it. Well, it does. You did put it powdered does, sugar yeah. <laughs> Okay, do you think it would be better? Oh, that's, that'll work. Well, yeah, I think yeah, it's okay. beautiful. Okay. Okay, so I'm just missing, mixing in all of these ingredients. Now, will you do me a favor since you're done? Uh -huh. Will you um, just take yeah. the blueberries, you coat, take, them, right? coat them with flour, which I did earlier, but they all fell to the bottom of the cake anyway, the bread. This is supposed to make them not do that, right? It's supposed to make them float in the bread, but. Uh -huh. Well, I will say these are re really big blueberries. Yes, they're lovely. Lemon juice, lemon zest, so yummy. Vanilla. Delicious. Mm. Oh shoot. What'd you do? Just, just follow the directions. Don't follow me. I was supposed <laughs> to do the milk and the dry oh, ingredients no. separately. So oh. sorry. I just think, follow the directions. Don't I've been follow hoping Stephanie. Someone will watch us and get us on the Food Network, but I think we just lost I, it. I, you know, I'm trying to read the board and so many ingredients. And it's just too much. It's just too much in five minutes. Way too much. Okay, I'm almost there. So I have a sprayed um, loaf, loaf pan. pan yes. Yep, so we're gonna, careful. Yep. We'll put this uh, in there after I fold the blueberries After I drop in. all these. Oh, that would be good television. That would make some noise. And you can get that and put the yummy. Look at that. Gorgeous. So, look how beautiful. Here, can I move? I, this? Um, I can safely move this. You all know that I'm an avid tea drinker, like a lot of people feel about coffee, but a true tea drinker, they, they, oops, oh. they love, um, they love um, good bread, good oh, bread gosh, with their tea. Yes. What goes with coffee? Everything. Donuts. Absolutely everything goes with Isn't coffee. Isn't it donuts? Everything. Okay, there, that's mixed. I'm gonna fold the blueberries in. Try not to make a mess. Gonna here. try to. Well, <laughs> I, I think this would have. I think this would have been better with if it had been a little bit um, more liquidy. Yeah, if we, we could have microwaved it a little bit because that butter had solidified. Yeah, it, it had. But it still tastes good. Yes. Well, I think anybody who hears. Lemon blueberry sure. knows it's going you know to be it's good. it's going to be good. So yeah. you're cooking it at 350 for an hour, mm -hmm. which I put it in the oven this morning upstairs. I turned the timer on, and then I went in my office, and that was it. I forgot about it. So thankfully, they walked through. Wanda and I. Yeah, when it was time. I'm going to take a slice out of the middle because it'll be a little more it'll moist. Be beautiful. Look at that. Oh, this is a batter licking. Yeah, we recipe. already mentioned just yeah. you'd enjoy just the bowl of batter. Yes, so good. But you know, um, quite honestly, I'm I'm a lot older than you, but you might agree. Some of the best memories of your life with your mama cooking, oh, and for you sure. get to lick the spoon. I say that all the time. Get your kids in the kitchen. Yes, always. Well, there's more reason now because I'm not sure most schools have home ec anymore. Mm, we're good. So good. Mm -hmm. Listen, I ruined my husband because I have cooked for the last 30 years. Well, now he's retired and he's trying to cook. And I've, I learned a very valuable lesson. Don't cook for 30 years and then expect your husband to cook. Just don't. Okay, where are you going to learn that? Teach except your husband home as you go. Let him cook on the weekends or something. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was telling you about um, my niece and her family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're very special. Someday I'll take you, tell you all about it. But um, they do take turns yep. cooking. There are certain nights that he cooks. And and our do own that. Rick Wolf does most of the cooking. Yes, he does. <laughs> so anyway, I want you to meet Heather, so I'm going to get over there. Uh, the recipe is coming up on your screen, and this is one you might really want to order. It's got a lot of ingredients. Get it the way you want it and enjoy it. We'll guarantee it. I want you to meet Heather, so stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers.
Marjorie? I have been waiting for Heather to come. She's been booked for a while, and I'm very proud to introduce to you Heather Dixon. Thank you for coming, and welcome to Homekeepers. Oh, Glad thank you so you. much. Thanks for having me on. And what a, what a book. <laughs> now, you are an author and a speaker and a Bible teacher. I am. That, that is my jam. That's what I do, and I love it. I think one of the greatest things of uh, churches in America <clears throat> are the women's Bible classes. Mm. My daughter is real prominent in one in uh, Tampa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I remember when I was much, much younger, there were three or four just in this county mm -hmm. uh, that were large. Yeah. And it really shows a heart for God. It does. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow <clears throat> up going to Bible study all the time. I think I started um, a, a, a for real Bible study practice about 20 years ago. Um, and, you know, it, it just has been such a blessing in my life to have that to feed, not only to learn from God's word, but also to have fellowship and learn from other women because that's where the richness is. Mm -hmm. Group Bible study is where you really get to dive deep and hear a perspective, you know, from someone else. Because let's say you read the Bible one way and you hear it from your sister and she may have something completely different and it touches her in a different way, but both are still true because that's how God's word just speaks into our lives. So that's why I love those classes <coughs> well, too. Well, this is uh, about Naomi. <laughs> me and Ruth and uh, <clears throat> this is so valuable when you really plumb the depths I mean mm. you've taken that story and you've just <laughs> run it dry <laughs> Well, it is, it, you know, and with a with a four chapter book of the Bible, you you kind of have to do that. But it is there's so many rich details in there, um, and it's such a beautiful story for so many women, especially now. You know, for those of us walking through this, you know, crazy COVID time, that you know nobody likes their story mm -hmm. right now. And I think Naomi has a lot to teach us about that. So it was a privilege. I like the way it. you put it. <clears throat> if you don't like your story, I, I've never heard it put that way, but I've I've certainly gone through those times in life yeah. where I hated my story. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and that was the impetus of, of st wanting to study the book of Ruth. It's always been my favorite book of the Bible, and I've always taught it from mm -hmm. Naomi's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I really think it's her story, and I can remember, you know, just crying out to God after, you know, hearing some really scary medical news and just saying, God, I don't like my story. What do I do with this? And, you know, he said, okay, let's, let's dive into your favorite book book of the Bible because there's more to learn. Yes, and before we do that, I want you to tell your story. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the program, she's completely different than what I expected. <laughs> I mean, joyful overcomer, and she has an autoimmune uh, disease that wasn't found until you were an adult, right? That's correct. It is, uh, it's called vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It's a genetic connective tissue disorder. So it's, it's a genetic mutation that makes my blood vessels, arteries, and organs prone to spontaneous rupture. Uh, makes them very fragile. And you know, I lived a relatively normal life growing up. I just always bruised really easily. I had these weird, you know, injuries and wounds, but we just thought, oh, well, she's just a, she's just a freak in that way. She's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. um, but then my mom, passed away in 1988 from this really rare medical thing and they had no idea what it was um, and then fast forward to when my son was born he was born prematurely because my membranes ruptured my colon ruptured a few years later and then in 2015 my carotid artery ruptured um, in addition to having a miscarriage and losing part of my kidney and so all of these uh, major medical events I was very fortunate when I when I was wheeled into the emergency room at 3.30 in the morning to have a doctor from France on call. And she's the one that spotted it and said, this is what you have. And I want you to have testing done. And sure enough, it was correct. And so, um, you know, the reason why I have all these major medical events is because of this disorder. You talk about, about a divine appointment yeah. from oh, France. Oh, well, and you know what? I mean, that is one of the things that I love so much about Naomi's story is that it reminds us that God is always working in our details. You know, that she can't see it but we have you know the privilege of hindsight to look back and see you know what he was doing that for you then like you were heartbroken and thinking you know your story is terrible but then here's God moving and working all these things to take care of her and that was one of the ways that God was in my details was by appointing this doctor from France who knew exactly what it, she looked at my skin she looked at my history she said I know exactly what you have no other doctor that I had seen in 38 years of my life had recognized it and that was so God in my details on that day. Now, when you get that 
news, mm. it's got to be a two-edged sword. Like, okay, we know what it is, but it's incurable, and yes. it, it, it could rise up any time yes it is and i will tell you it you know those those the three months after that official diagnosis were very dark for me mm -hmm. uh you know i, I was in, in a season of a very dark depression i did not want to get out of bed um, i was really struggling with you know god you you say that there is goodness in the land of the living can i still see it or mm -hmm. must i wait until heaven mm -hmm. um and you know over that that season of searching he he, he directed me to there's this passage in in, in deuteronomy Deuteronomy and 30, Deuteronomy 30, where, you know, he's, he's talking to the Israelites and he says, you know, basically, I have set before you uh, blessings and curses, right. life and death. And what does he say? He says, choose life. And so with his grace and his strength, that's what I did. Um, and so, you know, he was very gracious to me where, uh, you know, one of the ways that he renewed my story was plunging me head first into what I'm doing now. I don't have time to think about, you know, the, mm -hmm. the bad news of my story because I'm pretty busy mm -hmm. in ministry and that's, that's a beautiful thing. So, you know, that's just how he works mm -hmm. to kind of make things new again. Well, I think the audience can see what I was talking about. Um, I've been in the ministry all my life. Mm -hmm. My dad was a pastor. And to see that real true overcomer mm -hmm. is, is so refreshing because the scripture says it's there. Yeah. It is possible mm -hmm. and all. And so um, God has chosen you for this rather than divine healing, at least at the moment. That's I believe right. in divine healing. I, I believe you could heal you right this minute. Um, that is according to his plan. But... Um, you know, the overcomer, God uses you in spite of. Yeah. Well, and I think so many women that I write for and serve in my ministry, I, I affectionately refer to them as Naomi's and Mary's. My Naomi's who are like me, who are for some reason, God has chosen not to remove this obstacle, but to let you live with it for the entirety of your time here on mm -hmm. earth. Um, and then my Mary's who just, they just want to know God's word better. They're just Bible study nerds and they just uh -huh. want to dive in. So, Bible study nerd. Right? I love that. Listen, the, I've met a few of them. God bless them. I love them. Well, the Bible, I think the Bible is a nerd's paradise because uh -huh. there's, you know, they're always, there's always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. But for my Naomi's, it's, it's learning how to live with that story that, you know, is, is not going away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a season of hardship. It's a lifetime of a hard story and learning to walk that with Jesus. It's a beautiful journey. It's a heart wrenching mm -hmm. journey, but Naomi mm -hmm. teaches us how to do it. Well, let's talk about Naomi and the name of the book is Renewed mm -hmm. and we will have websites up and you can get the book through that. I'm sure it's on Amazon. And, it is. But Renewed, that's just one okay. word. Mm -hmm. So you ought to be able to, and you know what I've discovered this, you, you don't have to go to a class no, to learn. You, no, this you is don't. an amazing okay. book. Trust me on that. And um, you, you, can, you can dig in it and you've got different avenues mm -hmm. uh, to work out that really provoke your thinking and all. Um, I'm, kind, I'm kind of like you. I like Naomi. Um, Mothers-in-law don't have a <laughs> great reputation all the time. <laughs> and sometimes I've read about her with it. And then I, then I think, okay, both of her sons died. Her yeah. husband died. And she obviously was likable person. Her yeah. daughters-in-law loved her. Yeah, you know, it's such a, you know, the, the other angle of, of the book of Ruth, which, which I, you know, didn't, couldn't explore in the scope of the study was the, the you know the the essence of love between Ruth and Naomi this sisterly familial love mm -hmm. you know when Ruth says I where you go I will go mm -hmm. your God will be my God and so there is something beautiful there that's evident that Naomi and Ruth had a very special relationship mm -hmm. um, but you know I, I think that it's it's definitely a story to explore from Naomi's perspective we you know I, I love Ruth and Boaz, but they're beautiful and they're perfect. And I do, when I read Ruth, I don't think I am Ruth. I think I am Naomi. <laughs> Lord, my God, you know, God, my, my life is bitter. You've made my life bitter. Now let's deal with that. Like that to uh -huh. me, I resonate so much more with that. So, yes. Uh, so as you begin to really just take this life apart, mm. what was one of the first things that stood out to you that you didn't, you, you kind of had to read between the lines. In in Ruth's story? Yes. Yeah. So I think that uh, one of the things that struck me was the biases that we as, you know, 
as humanity can put upon grief. Um, and I think, you know, when I, when I ask, when I teach this and I ask my students and my gals, like when you think of Naomi, if you're familiar with her story, what do you think of most? They will what say, oh, they she's, say? she's the bitter one right? She's the one that was angry at God. She's the one that blamed God. Well, here, here's the thing. Um, you know, so often, you know, we can read that story and think, well, Naomi shouldn't have done this and she shouldn't have done this and she shouldn't have done this and she shouldn't have done this. But you know what? Her story really was more bitter than Ruth's. You know, I mean, oh, she yes. had no provision. She could not marry. She could not have any more children. And in those biblical times, that was, you know, a death sentence for a woman. And so, you know, when she she is crying out with her authentic heart of grief to say, my life is so bitter. Change my name to Mara because it means bitter. She was being very authentic. And so I think sometimes we can place that bias on Naomi's response to grief and judge it and say, oh, well, she should just say, I mean, have we heard this before? <laughs> Everything's fine right? I'm fine. God's going to bring me through and everything's fine. Those are not untrue statements, but I think we have to allow ourselves time to grieve and time to say, this is not okay. This is not the story that we wanted. And I think if we can learn to see how God looked at Naomi, he didn't judge her for being honest. In fact, he started working in her details to renew her story. You know, we don't know if she wanted to move to Moab either. Uh, That's right. <clears throat> Uh, Bethlehem's known as the house of bread. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bet she had a great life there. And I, I would imagine that if a man decided he wanted to move, he moved. That's right. Uh, he didn't consult his <laughs> wife, like, would you, would you like to do this? No. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of information, you know, from, mm -hmm. from a, a biblical scholar perspective on what really, you know, pushed them out. There's a lot of ideas and, well, it could be this and it could be this, but we really, we don't mm -hmm. know why they moved mm -hmm. to Moab. Um, but I love so much, there's this motif, you know, in the book of Ruth of this empty to full, you know, these empty to full themes that you move and they move away from the house of bread to, and then there's a famine in Moab. And so there's emptiness there and they move back. Foreign just, country. Right. Foreign country. She knows knows no one, you know, she has no family except for Ruth, but they move back just as the barley harvest is beginning. And that's God's code word for saying, I'm up to something, pay mm -hmm. attention. And so, you know, we have that motif from empty to full, full to empty, and then God works her empty to full all the way back. And it's just, it's such a, such a beautiful story. I love it when people like you, uh, teach and, and, yeah. and will actually put on paper and all you know, some of these insights, because the Bible is inexhaustible. It is a nerd's paradise. Uh, you've, it is a nerd's paradise. Look at all you've done here, <laughs> and somebody else might come along and, and yeah. have a bunch of ideas to add to yours. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you're, you're never, I mean, that's the, the word is living and active, and there's always something to learn there. Yes, uh, if you just joined me, my guest is Heather Dixon, and we've been talking about Naomi in the Bible. You know the story, the name of the book in the scripture is Ruth. Uh, but we're talking about the character in there by the name of uh, Naomi, and she's written this whole book about it. And if you could not attend her Bible class, which most of you could not because it's not in your area, this, I think, a, I think a, an inquiring mind, mm. even a basic one, could really glean a lot from this. You yeah. get out your pencil and you follow through what she does, but she's really done a great job that provokes the reader to do some thinking. Well, yeah, thank you for saying that. You know, I think that it's it's a four week study and there are, you know, basically three days of lessons um, in each week. And so it's very manageable for those of us that are juggling many things at home. If we've got children at home, um, you know, or if we're working outside the home, it makes it very manageable to walk through at your own pace. Um, and so I, my job is just to guide you through your personal study of God's word and to help you kind of figure all those things, all these questions in your mind out mm -hmm. and God's job is to make your heart come alive as you're reading it so you know more about him. What is the, the parallel, because I believe the Holy Spirit led you, <laughs> hmm. um, between your own situation and you, know, you, mm -hmm. you identify with her. Do I do, you? Not? absolutely, yes. yeah. You know, I do, and I'll tell you uh, that, it, that the parallel really did not become obvious with my medical diagnosis. It became really? obvious when my dad died suddenly. Um, he died when I was 30. Who's um, this? My father. 
Mm -hmm. And really? uh, my mom died when I was 11 from the condition that I inherited from her. And then my father died suddenly. He had a car accident. Um, and uh, he, we had 48 hours with him. Um, I did not handle it well. Um, I went into a season where I can remember standing on the carpet on our living room floor and crying out to God in very much the same language that Naomi said, you have made my life bitter. I don't like my story. Mm -hmm. And it was honestly, it was the, the lessons that I learned during that season. And I, I, listen, I walked away from God. I walked away from the church. It was about a period of about four years. You had been diagnosed by that time. No, no, no. This was before my diagnosis. Oh, just another thing. No, no, just, just another a thing. A little bit more bad news. Yeah, so. just, just a little thing. That's okay. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I walked away because I, you know, I naively thought that once I became a Christian, that it was all picket fences and unicorns mm -hmm. and rainbows. And that's, that's mm -hmm. just not how it is. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the, the blessings, the sweetness, come from walking with Jesus in those hard places mm -hmm. and, you know, being willing to say, Jesus, I trust you in this. And then I did not, you know, when my, my father died, I did not trust him. Um, and I'll tell you, those were the darkest years of my life, even more so than dealing with this crazy medical diagnosis. Boy, I've lived long enough to absolutely know we don't learn anything in the sunlight. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's in the valley. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's in the valley. But you know what? I mean, Jesus is so constant and so pursuing. He would not leave me there. Um, mm -hmm. And we were sitting on Easter, Easter Sunday was the only day I would go to church. And we were sitting there and the pastor was teaching about, you know, the end of John when Jesus appears to Mary and uh, she thinks that he's the gardener. Mm -hmm. And she says, just tell me where he is. Mm -hmm. And my, my, my son, who was four at the time, took this Bible, shoved it in my face and said, Mom, it's, no, he said, Mommy. At that point, he still called me Mommy. He said, Mommy, it's Jesus. Don't you see? There you go. Oh, listen, we're out of time. I know. Will, will, will you stay with me? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we're not finished. And so I'm going to uh, talk to her a little bit longer and it'll be on the next program. Okay. Uh, this is just too rich to let it go. Mm. And I kind of know my audience, I think, and there's so much good stuff here that can be helpful to you. Please remember there are prayer partners standing by right now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that a lot of things that Heather has said has kind of jogged your own thinking, and there's someone you could pick up the phone right now, and they'll be glad to pray with you. Yes, Jesus. And that is the wonder, beauty of Christian television. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's very many programs other than these that you could do that. So uh, please remember there's no higher calling than a homekeeper and I'll see you next time. Stay there. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.